This video is sponsored by World of Warships. After months and months of trying, I was finally able to buy myself a PS5 digital version, and now I'm gonna do what I do best, let's take it apart. So now I'm gonna tear down the PS5 digital version and see what the differences are between this one and the PS5 disc version. So here and here are where the optical drive connections are on the PS5 with the disk drive. This one obviously does not have them because it doesn't have a disk drive. So, so far everything is exactly the same between the diskless version and the disk version. Now I'm gonna get the 43 screws out of this metal plate so we can remove the metal plate and take a look at the motherboard. One thing that I very much dislike about the PS5 is if they made this big ribbon cable right here, if they made that accessible so you could disconnect that ribbon cable, then you could actually lift this whole middle piece out so you could do things like clean the heat sink or replace the power supply. But unfortunately, they covered it under this shield and so you have to remove all these 43 screws just to get to that ribbon cable so then you can remove this whole sandwich out of the rest of the PS5. But that's what they did, so let's get these screws removed. But before we get to that, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, World of Warships. World of Warships is a team-based sea battle game that requires different strategies and tactics, and best of all, it's free. The game features 400 historical ships that you can control and fully customize. There are over 44 million players in four different warship types. There are destroyers, battleships, cruisers, and aircraft carriers. The destroyers rely on their speed, maneuverability, and stealth. The battleships have the thickest armor and mightiest guns, and they can survive a huge amount of damage and obliterate an opponent. Cruisers are universal ships capable of varied tactics. They are irreplaceable during defense and attack. And of course, the aircraft carriers are the masters of reconnaissance and devastating airstrikes. A few of my favorite things about this game are you can actually learn about the historical ships of famous sea battles. And also I love the graphics because they include really cool changing weather and amazing landscapes. If you wanna check out this game, you can use the top link in the description to download World of Warships. And if you use my link in the description, you can use promo code BOOM to get a huge starter pack. During registration, use the code BOOM to get 200 doubloons, two ships, the St. Louis and premium ship Emden, 20 times Restless Fire Camouflage, 2.5 million credits, and seven days of a premium account. I think this game is super fun and I think you're gonna love it too. Now let's get back to the video. Whew, okay, now that we have all of those screws removed, we can remove this metal plate. Now it is stuck on there really good because it's got all this thermal paste right here and all of this thermal paste all along here. It was stuck the most right along here. This actually is kind of getting to be kind of some hard thermal paste already. This is kind of like a viscous thermal paste. It's not like the thermal paste that you usually put on like the main chip on a computer or, or game console. So it's not as fluid as that. It's a little bit thicker, but this is already kind of like hardening a little bit, which is interesting. And now with this ribbon cable and those two screws removed, we can lift up the motherboard sandwich out of the rest of the PS5 and get to the power supply. We can just lift up on the power supply and it'll come right out. Now for both versions of PS5, we can remove this entire outer piece right here. And this has all of the LEDs, power buttons, and also the front USB ports, the USB-C and USB-A ports. So the USB-C and USB-A are right here. The power button is right here. One thing I love about this kind of design is if, for example, one of these USB ports on the front goes bad, you can just get this little panel right here and take out three screws and put a new one in and you're ready to go. Unfortunately, I don't think they did this because of a repairability perspective. I think they just did it because that's how it worked out. But I wish more companies would keep modularity in mind when they design their products as it makes it much easier for repair. Now with this panel reinstalled, we can take a closer look at the PS5 digital motherboard. First, I need to remove the clamp and we can take a look at the liquid metal. 
And here we go. Can hear it loosening. Okay, and flip. One thing I do wanna make a note of here is there is a lot of liquid metal on these PS5s. You can see it's just pooled up right here on the heat sink and pooled up a little bit right here on the chip even. It's even soaked all the way into some of this material here, this sponge-like material. That's the sponge doing its job. That's what it's supposed to do in case any of the liquid metal jostles around. Now it does look like there's kind of like a dry spot over here on the APU itself, which is interesting. I haven't seen that before. So I'll need to make sure and spread this liquid metal all over the APU itself, just to make sure that it is spread correctly so it can cool the entire chip. Now that we've taken a look at the teardown for the PS5 Digital, let's get a PS5 disc version out and compare the motherboards and other components and see the similarities and differences. Looking at the two motherboards, they look pretty much exactly the same. I see absolutely no differences. In fact, if you compare the model numbers, EDM010, it's the same EDM010. So it's the same between the digital and the disc versions of the motherboards. Even when you start looking at the numbering of things, so this fuse is 3501, and same number over here, 3501. And we have a 7001 fuse up here, 7001 fuse up here. So as far as I can tell, these motherboards are literally exactly the same, except for on the backside. And when we start looking at the digital versus disc motherboards, there's really only one difference. Obviously the digital doesn't have a disc drive. So these connectors over here are not here. Whereas on the disc version, these connectors are here. Let me know in the comment section if you guys wanna see me try and put a disc drive in the digital version of the PS5. Now that I've checked the motherboards and found they're pretty much exactly the same, let's look at power supplies. So the model number for the disc model PS5 power supply is ADP400DR, and on the digital, model number is ADP400DR, and all of the ratings are the same, so these are exactly the same power supplies. Now, as I said earlier, I'm just gonna bring some of this liquid metal over here and just make sure that it's getting really good contact with the whole heat sink. Now that I've got that all spread around evenly, I can put the motherboard in, then I'll flip it over and we can compare heat sinks. And once again, as I would expect, the heat sinks are exactly the same between the PS5 Digital and the PS5 Disc version. If you'd like to see my teardown of the PS5 Disc version, I'll leave a link for that up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and check out the inside of the PS5 Disc version. Thank you again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try this game out, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can just click on that and it'll take you right there. Thank you for hanging out with me today and watching this video and I hope you have a good one.